What's going on everybody? This is Broken Games HDR and this is my review for Horizon Forbidden West. So, I played Horizon Forbidden West for 108 hours and that's how long it took me to get the platinum. I probably could have actually done it in probably 60, 70 hours because you don't actually have to do all the content, all the tasks, all the activities on the map to actually get the platinum, which is a good thing, but I love this game so much. I want to do everything. I enjoy doing everything. It was a pleasure. So me putting 108 hours in this game is a testament to how much I enjoyed it. So let's start with the story. So Horizon Forbidden West takes place six months after Horizon Zero Dawn when Aloy defeated Hades. Now she is on the search for a backup of Gaia, the AI, designed by Elizabeth Sobek to restore and sustain the planet since Ted Faro doomed all of humanity with his creations and with his sabotaging. Now, after searching a facility and learning about an initiative called Far Zenith, that leads Aloy to the Forbidden West and essentially where the story picks up at in Forbidden West. So I like the cast that they put in this game. It's a nice ensemble, a nice supporting cast that is diverse. Uh, they have different personalities and they're there to kind of bounce off of Aloy, right? Because a lot of people don't really like Aloy's characteristic and their personality. They say she's an asshole and a smart ass. Now, listen, Aloy is absolutely an asshole and a smart ass, but I don't see a problem with that. Probably because, you know, it, it takes one to know one, you know, real recognize real people call me an asshole and a smart ass all the time. And I take it as a compliment. So I don't see her kind of being, you know, and, and some people even call her a bitch, which I think is a little bit unfair. It's a lot of bit unfair, honestly. Now, but I'm an asshole and a smart ass. As I said, I definitely ain't no bitch, but I don't have a problem with how Aloy is as a character. The story is very sci-fi. I mean, the first game is obviously very sci-fi, but this one, I think especially with the dialogue, there's a lot more sci-fi fluff in there. It's kind of like the writers were like sniffing their own. I think they I think they was feeling themselves a little bit too much because, you know, there's some dialogue in this game. It, it almost starts to sound like, uh, you know, the architect from the Matrix. OK, y'all are feeling yourselves a little bit too much to make this, you know, to make this part of the game sound extremely like. Uh, of higher intelligence. But nevertheless, I enjoy the story. I think potentially where it leads the third game, which we're probably going to get, I think it leads it to a, to a great place. So I enjoy the story and I enjoy the plot. So let's talk about the gameplay. So there is, bro, there is a shit ton of stuff to do in Horizon Forbidden West, way more than the first game, right? So much more content. And here's the thing. It's enjoyable content it's not just you know filler and content put in the game just to say that the game has all this shit and just to you know fill up the map with all these icons even though obviously yes it does fill up the map but it's enjoyable and fun content that's the difference there's so many things to do here right and it's 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 your choice like i said you don't have to do this stuff to beat the game. You don't have to do most of this stuff to get the platinum. But some of some examples, I mean, there's Machine Strike, which is a strategy board game. Uh, you have Salvage Contracts, Hunting Grounds, Melee Pits, Vista Points, which are which are puzzles, Relic Ruins, which are environmental puzzles. There's Gauntlet, Gauntlet Mounted Races. There's Finding These Survey Drones, and those are their own type of puzzle. You have a Battle Arena, Taking Down Rebel Camps cauldrons and tall necks which were in the first game but gorilla has taken all of the things that were in the first game and vastly improved upon them it's not just the same okay this cauldron do the same thing they really tried to think outside of the box uh with the cauldrons and with the tall necks yeah the point of the tall necks is to get to the top of them but how you get to the top of them is really how they tried to be creative and tried to make it different from the first game there's a bunch of side quests errands and tasks i mean and they put real effort and thought into the side missions right and they and and one of the things is they made sure like in the first game they divided side quests from errands errands are listen go here and do this for me just go get go go fetch me this it's a fetch quest side quests 
tie more into the main game and with a lot of the uh, with a lot of even the main characters. And there, there's just more implications and there's like a deeper narrative and story into the actual side quest side quests really should be written like main quest, except you're just not required to do them. And that's what they do in this game with the side quests, you know, and the NPCs in this game are fantastic. They emote, they behave like real people and their mannerisms are just lifelike and authentic. There's a, there's a new um, and expansive skill tree. You can swim and fly in this game. And the machines, I, I really don't think people give, you know, the Horizon uh, series enough credit for the machines. The machines behave so unique. To have 40 plus of them, because they introduced like 20 something more in this game, to have so many machine types. And for all of the AI to be unique and to be aggressive and to be smart, I don't think the game gets enough credit for that. And I just I just love the, the, the main core gameplay of targeting pieces and weak points on these machines to disable their abilities and, and cripple them, you know, such as shooting off stalker units so you can stop them from going, going invisible, shooting off roller back engines to stop them from rolling, you know, shooting off uh, the, the Thunder Jaws missiles uh, and, and all their other, um, you know, type of weapons. So now they have no other uh, abilities other than mainly melee abilities. That part of Horizon is strategic targeting the, these weak points and these weapons to, to cr essentially cripple these these machines, right? It's it's not just some unga bunga, you know, just just shoot until the enemies are down. At least it's it's not that on the harder difficulties. And I played on the hardest difficulty, which is very hard, right? So it's it's not like that. It's it's a strategic game, and I don't think it gets enough credit for that. They've now they have overhauled the traversal and climbing system. Um, to call it free form, but it needs work. It definitely needs work. And that's something um, they're going to have to work on for the third game, because even though what they've done is essentially giving you, giving you more access to, to make it a little bit more uh, easier to reach places, the actual acting of climbing is a little bit cumbersome. So they, they're going to have to improve on that. Uh, Valor surges are something new. That's uh, something you unlock in the skill tree. Uh, and there are five uh, branches in the skill tree now specializing in a, in a type of gameplay. And the Valor surges uh, reflect uh, each type of, of gameplay style. And those are pretty much like, you know, you can consider them, you know, uh, ultimates or, or supers that Aloy can do after she builds up enough bar for it. There's new tools like the pull caster, diving mass, shield wing for gliding. Love the shield wing. You know, that that made uh, traversal and getting down mountains and, and, and accessing certain areas a lot easier. There's new weapons such as the spike thrower, uh, shredders, which are honestly ass. The shredders are probably the most use, useless weapon in the game. But, you know, they're new. And then there's the bolt blaster. So I enjoyed all the, I enjoyed most of the new weapons besides beside the shredder. I wish they could have uh, brought back uh, the weapon that you actually get in uh, Horizon Zero Dawn in the um, in the Frozen Wilds DLC. I wish you could have brought back that weapon. That would have been really good. There's new uh, arrows, ammo types, and mod coils. There's a lot more types of armor, and there's a bit of customization choice, such as the face paint, and melee combat has been vastly improved. I'm not going to say it's the greatest melee combat in a game, but it's a lot better than it was in Zero Dawn. This game is much more of an RPG, far more than, than of an RPG than Zero Dawn ever was. So the gameplay is just fantastic. The, the, there's so much content, so much to do. There's so much that clearly went into this game. And even though I'm, I'm just, I'm just honestly shocked they were able to do it in five years because people think five years is a long time, but for as much content they put in this game, I don't think five years is a long time. I mean, we, we've seen developers take six, seven years and not produce the game that you see in front of you that is Horizon Forbidden West. So I'm just saying. Now, visuals, the game looks amazing. I played in uh, performance mode. I need that 60 FPS. It's pretty stable it's at, at, at close or 
uh, at at 60. I refuse to play in qu in quality. That 30 FPS to me looks pretty choppy. I know they've re they've released several patches since the game came out. Gorilla is really good good at that, by the way. I think like the game has only been out what it's been two weeks, and they released like I think uh, maybe four or five patches already that fixed a lot of a lot of things, and uh, there was a lot of uh, there was a bunch of visual problems um, that people experienced. And uh, but performance mode looks amazing. Some people have said it looks bad. I don't know what they're talking about. Performance load mode looks amazing to me. I played the entire game on that. I looked I looked at quality mode one time and I was like, ain't no way in hell I'm playing on this. I mean, the water, the texture, the shadows and lighting, the vegetation, the character models, you name it, it looks good. There are pop-ins sometimes, absolutely, but this is one of the best games we've ever seen and played. I mean, Horizon <laughs> Zero Dawn was one of the best games we've ever seen and played at the time when it's came when it came out. This is even better. So, uh and, and the game just has, you know, so, all the different environment types. Every type of environment type you could really want to experience or you could have, it's in the Forbidden West map. There's swamps, deserts, snowy mountains, beaches, jungles and forests. It's 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 all the different type of biomes in one map. It, it, it's great what they, and it makes sense. It's not like they just forced it into the game just to say like, hey, we have all type of different environments. No, it's all, it's, 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 it makes sense where they're placed and the type of uh, settlements and the type of people who are there, all of it like makes sense logically. So I'm glad they were able to do that. I'm sure that was no, you know, small feat, especially making each one of the settlements and each one of the tribes that are in that environment actually, you know, behave and, and act like, yeah, this is the type of environment we, we live in. Um, so the few issues I had, like I mentioned the traversal, there were a few bugs. I didn't run into any like game breaking bugs or any major bugs, but small things here and there. And I do think Aloy talks a little bit too much, um, especially when it comes to pretty much holding your hand and telling you what to do. Almost most of the time when you walk into a situation where you need to figure out what the hell you're supposed to do, Aloy gives it away almost immediately so that's a problem they're they're gonna have to like patch you know how quick she kind of gives it a uh and you know pretty much gives you the answer the solution for whatever problem you're facing facing so they're gonna have to fix that so with everything i said i give horizon forbidden west a nine out of ten this game is amazing it's definite it's it's far better uh than than the first game you know the a few things hold it back like the climbing and, and, and a few of the bugs horizon zero dawn you know was my one of my favorite games of last gen and it's you know i since 2017 i said and i stood on this i never changed i said this is the best new ip of that generation and, and i stood on that so i'm obviously a huge horizon uh fan so please let me know what you thought about my review thank you for watching hit the like button if you enjoyed follow me on twitter hit the notification bell so you can know anytime i upload or go live and i will catch y'all on the next one peace